Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our praise worship. Do we have some announcements this morning? Um, first of all, happy Father's Day to all fathers and those that have filled that role for someone throughout their lifetime. Um, we still have that announcement from Lutheran Outdoor Ministries going on. We have five camperships and two family camperships available. If you are interested, see me after worship service. They're all free. Um, next Sunday, after both services, we are having communion assistant training. If you are interested in becoming a communion assistant, please show up at one of those um, training sessions. They'll only last a few minutes because it's really not as difficult as what some people think. Um, so it won't last too long. Um, we'll give you the inside scoop on it, and uh, we'd be glad to have more people participating in that role. Um, other announcements, more details, and the schedule for the week are in the bulletin. And before we get started, Jeremy has an announcement about the Cardinal Corral visit. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I made the announcement last week asking for people to prayerfully consider housing some of these kids that are coming in on the 22nd. Didn't get much of a response, so I'm asking again, please, 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 I need to house, as of, as of this point, 40 more kids. Um, if you have a couch, a couple beds, all they need is just transportation, place to sleep, and a hot shower. So if you would please consider doing that for me. Um, if you can mark the C on your yellow slip, and I will be getting a hold of you this week to uh, find out how many kids you can house or adults, and uh, any more details that you may have any questions on. Or if you have any other questions, please see me in the gathering space after service. Thank you. Would you please stand and we'll begin our worship. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are, what are the mere mortals, mortals that, that you should, should be mindful, mindful of them, them. Human, human beings that, that you should care for them. them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have, you have made, made them rule over the works of your hands. hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And we sing our gathering song, Majestic. Join with the earth and I'll give 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. In the presence of God, who sees our hearts and our minds, let us confess our sin. God, our strength. We confess, we confess that, that we, we are, are captive, captive to the to power of sin that dwells within us. us. We, we put, put ourselves first and others last. What, what we, we think, think will make us happy leaves us longing for more. Even when, when we want, want to do what is good, we find ourselves doing the opposite. opposite. Rescue us, us from death's death grip on our lives and raise us up day by day that we may be alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sisters and brothers, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are justified by God's grace as a gift. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, in whom we have forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, 
where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and if the ushers will come forward, we'll have our offering. Special music this morning is by Terry Turner. We were made to love and be loved But the price this world demands Will cost you far too much I've spent so many lonely years Just trying to fit in Now I've found my place in this circle of friends In a circle of friends We have one father In a circle of friends share this prayer that every orphaned soul will know and all will enter in to the shelter of this circle of friends if you weep i will weep with you if you sing for joy, the rest of us will lift our voices too. But no matter what you feel inside, there's no need to pretend. That's the way it is in this circle of friends. In the circle of friends, we have one father. In the circle of friends, we share this prayer. That together, together, no matter how the highway bends, I will not lose this circle of friends. Among the nations, tribes, and tongues, we have sisters and brothers. And when we meet in heaven, we will recognize each other with joy so
first reading this morning is from the first chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and a darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser night, light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And, Jesus, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all of the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. 
The second reading is from the 13th chapter of 2 Corinthians, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Will you please stand as we prepare our hearts for the gospel? today is from Matthew chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the risen Lord Jesus the Christ. You may be seated. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. 
Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Bump, set, and spike. Stop, drop, and roll. Red, white, and blue. A priest, a minister, and a rabbi. A blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. Larry, Moe, and Curly. Peter, Paul, and Mary. We have all come to know many trios and sets of threes throughout our lives. I searched on the internet this last week and found many lists and was pleased to find that at least one site listed the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as the number one most famous trio in history. Ah, there's still hope in our world. And today we celebrate that trio, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons in one Godhead. As one writer declared, the Trinity is more than just a doctrine. The Holy Trinity expresses the heart of our faith, we have experienced the God of creation made known to us through Jesus Christ and with us always through the Holy Spirit. So today we celebrate the mystery of the Holy Trinity in word and sacrament as we profess the creed and as we are sent out into the world to bear witness to our faith, emphasizing the importance and the, and the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Martin Luther once said, to try to deny the Trinity endangers your salvation. To try to comprehend the Trinity endangers your sanity. And since we are beings that desire explanations, we often search for ways to define the Trinity. St. Patrick used a shamrock to represent the Trinity. Another way is explained by saying that God the Father is the mouth, the word he speaks is Jesus, and the breath he uses to speak is the Holy Spirit. Or there is the analogy using water. The Trinity is like an ice cube in a pan of boiling water. The ice is solid, the water is liquid, and the steam is gas, but they are all water. All three things are separate, but they are all the same, and all the same at the same time, in the same place. And then some think of the Trinity as an apple. The peel, the flesh, and the seeds. Three parts to one apple. The peel is like God the Father, because he protects us. The flesh is like God the Son, because Jesus is God made flesh. And the seeds are like the Holy Spirit because he helps us grow. There are many other ways that we can use to describe God as the Holy Trinity. And many of them seem to dwell on what God is rather than who God is. But no matter how we do it, there's always a, menace, a, a mystery. And also in doing so, we seem to reduce God to a physical explanation. And by doing so, we put limits on God that simply do not exist. To this end, John Wesley was quoted as saying, bring me a worm that can comprehend a human being, and then I will show you a human being that can comprehend the triune God. Stephen Eason, who's the senior pastor at Mark Myers Park Presbyterian Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. He presented the Holy Trinity in a bit of a different manner in an excerpt in the commentary series, Feasting on the Word. Rather than struggling to understand the Holy Trinity by defining the Trinity, he suggests that the Trinity is best understood if we ask this question. What if there were no trinity? In other words, how can we define God without the trinity? If we try to do so, we may say that we baptize in the name of the Father. 
and by doing so we deny the work and person of Jesus Christ and the ongoing activity of the Holy Spirit. We would not have the full picture of who God is. Likewise, if we just baptize in the name of Jesus, we miss out on the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and we have no logic to creation as it was presented in our reading from Genesis today or the ongoing creation that is all around us. And of course, we would not want to baptize in the name of just the Holy Spirit. If we did so, we would be missing out on the awesomeness and creativity of God the Father and the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, who is God in human flesh. The Holy Trinity is more than just a doctrine. The Trinity expresses the heart of our faith. Certainly, the Holy Trinity is much more than a doctrine as we are drawn into relationship with all three parts of the Holy Trinity. The creative powers in our world presented to us by the Father. The Son gifts us with the power of salvation. And it is the grace of the Holy Spirit that empowers us in our faith today. Without these three relationships, we would not be called Christians. Without these three relationships, we would not be able to make sense out of our spiritual life. Without these three relationships, we would have nothing. But what does all this understanding of the Holy Trinity do for us as we come to God today? Does an understanding of the Holy Trinity really matter as we deal with broken relationships, as we deal with conflicts in our lives? What does the Holy Trinity mean to us as we deal with illnesses, diseases, and end-of-life decisions? Why is the Holy Trinity important to us as we deal with children who are making Decisions that are not wise, that may affect them in a horrible way the rest of their lives. Children who are dealing with addictions. Children that are simply having a difficult time getting started in life. As we all deal with financial woes, or wonder how to deal with the horrors that we hear on the nightly news, what does the Holy Trinity mean to us? Well, the Holy Trinity means very simply that as we come to worship, though we bring our own doubts, we know that God is with us. In the Gospel lesson today, we hear that after the resurrection of Jesus, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them, and they saw him. They worshipped him, but some doubted. Many Bible scholars translate that to, as they worshipped him and doubted. We all come to God with doubts, and we all come to God worshipping. To this, Luther describes us simultaneously as sinners and saints, as he defines a saint as a forgiven sinner. The Lutheran Confessions define sin as the self-centered failure to trust God. If we all go back to the creation story, Adam and Eve's problem wasn't that they ate a piece of fruit or that they broke one of God's rules, though that was part of it. Their real sin was their desire to be like God, relying on their judgment rather than trusting God's word. For us, too, our specific sinful behaviors are only symptoms of this self-centered condition that theologians call original sin. 
our doubts are created because we do not put our trust in God. Catherine Kleinhaus, a professor of religion at Wartburg College, addressed this in an article in the Lutheran a few years ago. She wrote this. We are called saints, not because we change into something different, but because our relationship with God changes as a result of God's grace. She continued with this story. During my final year of college, I faced some difficult decisions. I sought advice from one of my professors, who was also a pastor. He said, remember that even if you make the right choice, you are forgiven. Wow. It's easy to relay, rely on ourselves with forgiveness as an assurance policy in case we mess up. But this wise pastor reminded me that even on my best days, what matters most is not what I do or what I decide, but that Jesus died for me. When I look at myself in the mirror, I always see the reflection of a sinner. But when God looks at me, he sees me through Jesus. My sin is covered with Christ's own righteousness. So as we come together on this Holy Trinity Sunday, we simply need to remind ourselves, be aware of and open ourselves to the presence of God, the three in one in our lives. Just as Jesus assured his disciples, I am with you always to the end of the age. We are assured that God in three persons is with us as we are engaged in the whole being of God, whether we understand it or not. As we come to God today, we are assured that we are immersed in the whole being of God through the waters of our baptism. Just as we positively know that when we pour milk over Rice Krispies, we will indeed hear the trio of the sounds snap, crackle, and pop. We most certainly know that at the dawn of every day, we abide in the Trinity, and the Trinity abides in us. We live in the assurance that we are protected by a loving God, that this Father has the power to create everything anew, that we can turn to God at the beginning of the day and start each day new. We live in the assurance that our sins are forgiven once and for all by the death of Jesus Christ. And by his resurrection, we have opened to us the gates of heaven and eternal life. And we live in the assurance that just as Jesus promised his disciples he would be with them to the end of the age, that the Holy Spirit that descended upon the disciples on that Pentecost day is guiding us and leading us every day and will be with us to the end of the age. We live in the assurance that God in three persons, is with us. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we celebrate the mystery and the gift of the Holy Trinity, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds to your presence in our lives and in our world as we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And join us as we sing our song of the day, Draw Me Nearer. Thine, O Lord, I have heard your voice, and 
and it told your love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me near to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near to your precious bleeding side. Draw me near. Draw me near. Consecrate me now to your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steady hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer to the cross where thou hast died. Strengthened by the Spirit who gives us words to speak and hearts that care, let us bring our hopes and needs to God who listens. Almighty God, you send your people into the world as beacons of light and hope. Bless the ministries of churches everywhere, that they take strength from your promises to be with us always. Today we pray especially for St. John Lutheran Church in Port Clinton and their pastor, James Lehman. Heavenly Father, with a word you brought forth the majesty of creation, rolling hills, fragrant meadows, thundering seas. Inspire us to cherish and preserve them as stewards of your good land. O oh God, be with those in the path of violence and war. Guard them against harm and give them a future with hope. Send your peace to the places that need it the most. Gracious God, give strength to those bearing heavy burdens, addiction, mental illness, loneliness, and grief. Heal those whose bodies and souls are hurting. We pray especially for those whose names are listed in the bulletin, 
along with those that we name aloud or silently at this time. We pray for the family and friends of Ruth Peters. We pray for the family and friends of Anna Jane Foltz. We pray for those in care facilities, those bound at home, yes. and all caregivers. We ask for your blessings upon the military. O oh God, enable this congregation to support all families. Strengthen fathers and all who nurture so that they guide with wisdom, gentleness, and grace. We give thanks for all the saints who rest eternally in your loving care. Enlighten our witness by their example. We lift our prayers to you, God of mercy, confident that all things are in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. May God the sower make you good and fertile soil. May Christ the seed bloom and grow in your words and actions. May the fate, fruitful spirit bring forth a bountiful yield in your lives. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We close our worship this morning with our sending song, One Pure and Holy Passion. Obsession. Jesus, give me one glorious ambition for my life to know and follow hard after you. To know and follow hard after you. To grow as your disciple in the truth. This world is empty, pale, and poor. Jesus, give me one glorious ambition for my life to know and follow hard after you. To know and follow hard after you. To grow as your disciple in the truth. This word is empty, pale, and poor compared to know. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.